Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the fourth installment of our five part Women of Influence virtual event series. My name is Alicia Scallon. I'm the co CEO and head of events at Women of Influence. And I want to thank you all for choosing to spend your time with us this afternoon. It's hard to believe nearly three months have passed since we last gathered in a room together. And I can tell you we're very much looking forward to when that time comes again. But in the interim, we are grateful to be connecting through this virtual series. For those of us who have joined us for previous installments, you'll know that typically we would start our events at the land acknowledgement for the city we are gathering in. For those joining us for the first time today, and there are hundreds of you across the country, we would be remiss to not include this very important element. So please do take a moment to acknowledge that whatever land you are on is the traditional territory of many nations and is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. I'd like to thank our presenting partners for producing this very important programming with us, BDC, the only bank devoted exclusively to entrepreneurs, and Cisco Design for Small Business is here to help female entrepreneurs survive and recover through secure remote work technology. We posted links to both BDC and Cisco Design resources in the chat box and encourage you to see how they can help you. Just before I introduce our guests today, a few housekeeping items that will allow for the best possible viewer experience. I'm very pleased to announce that we have integrated closed captioning for today's episode. In order to access this feature, please go to the multimedia viewer tab on the right side of your screen and press the continue button. If you do not require closed captioning, we recommend switching your screen to grid view. The second half of the event will include a live audience Q&A, so please do feel free to type your questions in the Q&A box on the right-hand column of your screen throughout the conversation, and our MC will get to as many of them as time permits. Finally, if you have any technical questions, please do type them into the chat function speech bubble on the right-hand side of your screen, and our tech support will assist you. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our MC today, Marcia McMillan from CTV News, along with our feature guests, Lynn Trong from the Soap Dispensary in Vancouver and Hannah James from Greenhouse Juice Co. in Toronto. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Alicia. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that warm welcome and I appreciate everyone being with us for this next installment of our What Now series. Today, we're switching things up a little bit. We have not one, but two guests with us today to talk about their experience um, before this pandemic and during this pandemic of running a business. So welcome, ladies. I want to start by asking each of you how you're doing. Lynn, I'll start with you. Give us a, a brief snapshot of where things stand for you right now. Um, hi, thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, we're, uh, my team and I, we're doing good. Uh, we're very grateful to have been able to remain open this whole time. Um, I feel really good that I've been able to keep my team and still serve our customer base. Um, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's honest, love that. Uh, Hannah, how about you? Yeah, nice, so happy to be here. Uh, similar to Lynn, I think, you know, very grateful that I've been able to stay in business throughout this pandemic. Uh, lucky that I have a great team that is able to work and has helped, you know, shift through this time with me. And yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster. I think every day, you know, it's every day is different. So it's hard, you know, when you ask someone, how, how are you doing? It's it's honestly, it's like minute to minute, hour to hour. Yeah. But it, it, I know, I'm sure there are a lot of people here in Toronto. So this our recent heat wave has helped with the spirits being lifted this week. So I think that that's been a, a nice positive this week. Yeah, the sun shining has meant a lot. Okay, well, let's uh, dive in. I'm glad to hear you're both doing well. And Hannah, we should also say congratulations because you got married too. So there's been a lot going on with you. Okay, so uh, Lynn, let's go back to when we first learned about the pandemic. Uh, what was your first reaction and what was the first thing that you did to keep your business going? Because we should mention as well, both of you have been able to keep going because you've been deemed essential services. So Lynn, what was your first course of action? Um, well, we shut our store for two days and we sanitize from top to bottom. Um, every single bottle on our shelf was wiped down with sanitizers and um, and it was also a good way for us to kind of reset and have a check-in with our staff um, without the public coming in. Um, 
and just kind of starting from um, a good baseline before we reopened. And also to, to, to reassure our customers that everything in the store was absolutely clean when they walked in. So for people who don't know what the soap dispensary sells, what products do you have and what is your mission? Um, well, uh, we are a, um, um, a bulk, um, zero waste, low waste um, refill store. Our mission is to help our community reduce single use packaging, primarily plastic packaging um, in their everyday consumer goods that they buy. Um, so customers um, normally pre-COVID would bring in all their empty containers and we would fill it up with shampoos and laundry soap and olive oil. Um, we basically sell everything that a grocery store does except everything comes in bulk quantities. Okay, so you went into deep cleaning mode. Hannah, when COVID hit in early March, what did Greenhouse Juice have to do to begin this new uh, chapter? Yeah. We, so we, we, have a, we have a pretty big team. At the, at the time, we had 10 stores open and, and, and a big team, you know, all our retail staff, all our head office staff, production and delivery. So we kind of had to get, we have, we have a COVID force, a COVID review team that, you know, is, keeps up to date with everything that's happening. But that was, we had, we put that together of people who were, you know, wanted to be part of that, um, to be in the know and, and to know what we were doing with the business. And we had to decide what we were going to do because um, we were able to stay open. We had to decide how that, what that looked like. And we ended up, we wanted to do the, you know, what was best for the business and what was best for our team and then best for our customers. So we did end up closing the majority of our stores uh, before there was any mandate to do so. We just, you know, we, we um, thought that we have a lot of stores in a lot of high density areas of, of the city and in very small spaces that are, you know, you don't need a fridge and a little counter. So having those really small, tight spaces, we thought that would be difficult to work with uh, under the new circumstances. We closed a lot of our stores. We uh, immediately ordered, you know, partitions for the stores that would be opened. Uh, we added, you know, we looked into how we could extend our, our home delivery offering because that we knew that was going to be a much larger part of our business uh, in post-COVID times. And uh, personally, I actually had to cancel a lot of travel. I was actually, 2020 was a big year for Greenhouse to expand uh, nationally. So I had four trips booked in three weeks to different oh, wow. uh, Canadian cities. So canceling all of that, um, re, you know, and rescheduling meetings where, you know, both parties were kind of like, yes, of course, <laughs> we'll, we'll reconvene in, you know, whatever, two weeks is, I think, was the timeline we gave ourselves. Well, you know, we'll see what, what's happening in a couple weeks. But as we all know, it's been much longer <laughs> stretch than that. Much longer. And, and the way you describe it, it sounded so like everything was coming at you so quickly. And I'm wondering if you feel that way about it now when you reflect or was it all sort of going down in slow motion? No, it, it was it, honest. Like the days felt, like the, the, every day felt almost like a week. With mm. I think that, and I'm sure Lynn can attest to that too. Is just everything yes. was changing so quickly. So, you know, from the morning, from you know, a Monday morning to a Monday afternoon, there would be maybe you know the government had come out with three different releases. There was new <laughs> regulations. So just being really quick on our feet, staying up to date with all the information that was out there. Uh, it felt, yeah, that, I think the first, the first week could have been a month, could have been a year, you know, especially how much things changed as well. The way that our team was feeling, you know, even managing the emotions of people, uh, because as I said, it's, it's day to day, it's minute to minute, it's hour to hour of how people are feeling, how people are reacting to this pandemic, you know, it's, it's, it's a crisis. So, you know, everyone reacts differently. They react differently than in their normal day to day working lives. So. I feel that it was really, yeah, things were changing really quickly. I think now, now we've, you know, we've, we've got our cadence and it's definitely sl slowed down in, in that sense. I think we've, we've settled into it a little bit more, but at the beginning it, yeah, it, it, it felt those first few days definitely felt like an eternity. <laughs> yeah. Lynn, what about you? Because 
I'm assuming you wouldn't even know who to turn to to ask for advice. I mean, this situation was brand new for everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we, um, my team and I, we just, uh, we have a morning meeting every day. We have a check-in and um, I bounce ideas off of them. Are you comfortable with this? Do, do, do we need more barriers? You know, um, so um, I have a much smaller company. We just have one location. So in a way we are much more, I'm able to be much more um, directly um, involved in communicating with my staff as well as with my customers because uh, we are a storefront and people do come in. We can see them in person and talk to them and as well as using social media. Um, so um, we, it, it, exactly what Hannah said, it, it, it just, um, things just went so fast and every day we were adapting and changing. And, you know, I, I, I felt that also kept me, that kept me busy and it kept my team busy so that we weren't just kind of wallowing in fear too. I mean, it, it's kind of a double-edged thing. We, we had a, we have a store to run, we have customers to, to take care of and how we do it safely, but we just got to keep moving. Yeah, yes. you have that sense of purpose that kept you going. So did you, Lynn, have to lay anyone off? No, <laughs> and uh, we we actually need to hire now. Um, I didn't have to lay anyone off. Um, we started with, before COVID, we had 28 staff members. Um, 10 of them basically decided that they weren't comfortable working, um, so they had um, they're, they're, they're not working, um, but of course, uh, we welcome them back. And we actually had encouraged some of them to come back. Um, so um, I started um, creating an evening team where there were no customers coming in, but we still needed orders fulfilled for the next day's delivery. And so I would have one or two staff members who didn't feel comfortable, they would um, come at night, work for three, four hours um, by themselves or with another team and still make some money and still kind of stay involved with the company and help us. So, yeah, we've just had to be very creative. Right, adapt. That's terrific that you were able to do that and that they were able to work um, with those hours. So, Hannah, what about you? You mentioned that you had to close some retail locations. So did you have to lay many people off and what was that like? Yeah, and, and unfortunately we did, uh, you know, it was more, I think for us, it, we, we, it was more of a pause, like right, already we've, st we are reopening a couple more stores that make sense. So bringing back those team members, uh, we've started doing that for those stores, which is exciting and uh, very promising, but it was, you know, it was tough. It was, it's uh, no business, you know, you, especially in retail, I know, I'm sure Lynn feels it as well. It's really hard to find good people. So having to close those stores for reasons out of our control was was really hard. Um, you know, many we we we've built a really great team at Greenhouse. So if you know if you've been in any of our stores, we try to make it feel like you're walking into our home. So very inviting, very warm, uh, very engaging team members. So it was definitely a tough uh, a tough time. But at the same time, we were able to keep a lot of our team members as well. Uh, it, and in the team members we did keep, we were at, we we are able to give them a raise. So the people who are on the front lines in our stores, in production, in our delivery teams, you know, actually being able to compensate them for taking taking the risks that mm -hmm. they do every day by even coming to work, by getting on the subway or however they you know, uh, by making their way out, venturing out into the world. Uh, we commended them, and I think that that has been, it, you know, it's built a stronger team amongst uh, amongst us and, you know, the that we've been able to shift and, and move through this period of crisis together has been has been a, a learning experience, but I also think like a, bo a bonding and growth experience for the whole team. That's terrific. Um, Lynn, so you have in stock some of the most in-demand goods right now. 
what were some of the challenges that you faced, especially in those early days of getting those products that you needed? Yeah, um, uh, for years we sold rubbing alcohol um, used for cosmetic and, um, you know, uh, a little bit of home care kind of cleaning. And then suddenly when this pandemic hit, um, we were flying through uh, them and what used to be a two day turnaround to get alcohol became a two month wait. <laughs> so um, it just forced me to um, search farther. We always try to source as locally as we can. Um, and I eventually found alcohol um, out of, I think, uh, Brampton, Ontario or somewhere. Some, some manufacturer out there was able to ship me like um, 200 liters. <laughs> <laughs> but that still took an extra three weeks to get here. And in the meantime, no one could find alcohol in the stores around here. So it was really, it was a very stressful time, um, but we're well stocked now. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, Hannah, what about you? Um, y all the produce that you would need for your fruit and vegetable juices, your smoothies, where'd you get all that stuff from? Yeah, like, luckily we we have a lot of, you know, we, we do a lot of volume, so we had a lot of contracts in place, which was very fortunate, uh, but there definitely was price fluctuations, which we didn't mm -hmm. accommodate for, and then there also was the change in our volume. So there was a bit, you know, we, we, we went from 10 stores down to three stores, uh, we are not, do, you know, we were just in the midst of growing our business across Canada. Uh, we'd started home delivery in Vancouver and our food service delivery in Vancouver and that kind of completely shut down. So our predictions for how much we needed definitely decreased. So trying to manage through that, work through the contracts, make sure we had enough but then didn't have too much. So there was a lot of adjustment on that front and uh, and we, we did have some extra. So we are, we, we've, we've Changed, we've in, introduced a new platform to our home delivery. We've, we've introduced a plant pantry. So uh, we are feature local Toronto businesses and goods, some that might not have their own distribution network. We also offer things that we use in our production. So we're offering a fresh produce box. We offer frozen uh, produce that we would use for smoothies because we actually also halted smoothies at the beginning as well we're slow we're actually just starting to bring them back on but at the beginning you know we thought it's, it's preparation it's uh, you know in the, in these first times where things are so uncertain we're going to stop everything except for the grab and go uh, bottled beverages so being able to offer those elements of our, of our smoothies to our customer uh, was a really great was really exciting and and you know we we're able to do it in a bulk format uh, pass along some of our discount savings to our customer in uh, in the new plant pantry format as well. So that was very exciting for us. Yeah. So during that period, um, and I'll put this question to both of you, starting with you, Lynn, how were customers reacting to the change, the change in their lifestyles, their shopping habits, um, products not being readily available? What did you notice um, in terms of the people that were loyal to your business? Oh, so much kindness. Um, just as we were grateful to be open, customers were grateful that we were open. Um, in the early days, um, like we, um, well, still today, we only allow two people in our store at a time. And uh, in the early days, there was a little bit more panic buying. And so some people would wait in line for an hour outside to come in and then just be so thankful and gracious and um, understanding when we didn't have something or uh, we had to um, implement a lot of um, uh, what do you call it restrictions on how much mm -hmm. people can buy such as toilet paper and alcohol um, and people were very understanding of that and um, I think it's also nice to uh, for people to see that their neighborhood store is still open um, back in March and still it's just slowly kind of reawakening but our street is like a ghost town most of the stores are closed and I think to see that when you 
are able to walk out of your house is, uh, you know, adds more to the anxiety, I think. Yeah. Um, and so at least they can see, oh, okay, the soap dispensary is open. I can still come in and get my favorite things. And I still have friendly staff to greet me and talk to about how things are going. And I think that um, businesses like us that have been able to remain open, especially small independent businesses where we know our customers by name and everything, um, we just add an, a, a little more um, uh, uh, widen their circle maybe a little bit because they can't see their friends and family, but they can at least come in and talk to us and be fam wow. in the, a familiar setting. Right, and still have that little teeny tiny sense of normal, if you will. Yes. Hannah, what about you? Did you notice um, that your customers were patient? Did you lose a lot of regular customers that were ordering home delivery? How did that look? No, I think I, I agree with Lynn. I think that people were very patient. They were very thankful that we were staying open, mm. uh, especially, you know, with I think everyone feeling the, the pressure of, you know, bulking up your immune system, making sure you can be as healthy as possible. Obviously, our customer is very familiar with that. You know, they, they're familiar with our booster shots, but the amount of the increase in sales on booster shots was astounding. People, you know, were... We actually um, uh, released bulk packages before we only sold them in singles, and then we, we started selling our booster shots and other uh, some of our most popular items in six packs because we could see that people there was that you know the, the way that their basket was looking changed after COVID. People were buying in more bulk. It wasn't you know and and they were stocking up on their immune boosting products. So there was definitely a change in the consumer. I think that we saw a change in the consumer buying patterns and we we responded to that so that we could give them give our customers a little bit of a break if they were buying in bulk uh, but there was yeah there was a lot of amazing we got a lot of messages through social media and through our uh, emails just thanking us for doing what we we're doing and then also seeing an influx I think of new customers maybe people who might not have tried greenhouse before but you know maybe in this COVID era are trying, you know, trying new things to increase their immune system, to stay healthy, uh, do everything they can to stay healthy. So that I think was really interesting as well. So through this disruption, many have found opportunity. And I'm wondering about that with you, Lynn. I know that you had plans, I think for years to, <laughs> <laughs> to kind of digitize things, go online, if you will. Tell us how the whole pandemic forced you into uh, into action. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. If you go to our website, you'll see um, online store coming soon. And that has been up for three years. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had planned to go online, but it just never felt right because we're a bulk store. and We want your containers to fill. But um, during this pandemic, of course, we're not allowed to refill customers' containers. And so we invested in thousands, over 10,000 jars, glass jars and containers. And um, that opened up an opportunity for us to sell online our bulk products because we, we don't have to wait for people to bring their containers in anymore. Um, and people just pay a deposit and then that gets refunded when they return the jars to us. And so it's this kind of circular, circular, circular system. Um, and so that, that made it so much easier for us to start an online um, process. Um, but of course, um, we have 800 bulk products and thousands of merchandise, and it would have taken us probably a month, if not more, to build a web store. And that just, we just didn't have time for that. And we didn't have the staffing for that or the budget for it. So um, we just figured out how to quickly put together um, an online order form and um, our menu, which we transferred from our own database to um, Excel spreadsheets and um, uploaded that all online. And they were able to um, see all of our offerings and then place their order and submit it, and then our team receives it, fulfills it, and it's ready to go. 
So this is this is um, incredible. We, we've seen, I think, our walk-in customer numbers have dropped significantly, and this online um, store um, is really saving uh, saving us. So it's here to stay. It is here to stay. Yes, I don't think we can take this away from our customers. <laughs> Hannah, you developed some new partnerships along the way. You kind of mentioned um, those. Tell us more about who you are. Uh, actually, you're sort of working as an agent, I guess you could say. You've got different services now. You're not just selling a greenhouse. You've got new partnerships. Tell us how those came to be and did those relationships kind of take seed much quicker because of the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. So before this, we'd never carried anything but greenhouse. We always we had only greenhouse branded products and that was, you know, it just didn't occur to us to really bring in anything else. But, you know, once COVID hit, we saw the increase in our home delivery. We've had home delivery since 2014. So we felt very lucky that we had this infrastructure in place already. But we could see that there was obviously a need, you know, there's grocery slots being, you know, you're try you go online to get a grocery spot. And this was right at the beginning and, you know, you couldn't get it for two weeks out. And many of us need groceries sooner than two weeks out from the current time. So we we saw that there was definitely a need. And then we at the same time, we saw our partners. So as, as I mentioned, uh, food service, our food service side of the business, which is our relation, we sell juice to the coffee shops, the restaurants, the gyms, the yoga studios. That business obviously shut down very quickly. And a lot of those businesses were suffering. So we thought, how can we you know, help our customer get products that they need, but also that might make them feel a little bit, give them a little bit more normalcy, products that they might be missing, you know, not necessarily essentials, but things that, they, you know, you might need for your mental health or, you know, for that to feel like that things are slightly normal. So we partnered, we decided to bring on products that were, that weren't juice. So, you know, we worked with uh, Broadflower, which is a local, uh, um, they mill their own flour in Liberty Village. Uh, we we brought on some vegan cheeses. We brought on olive oils. We brought on, you know, we brought on treats. We brought on some local chocolates and, you know, good hummus, hummus, and and just small businesses that didn't have that have great product that a product that we you know that we personally really love that might not have the distribution or as large a distribution network that we do. So. It was really amazing to work with these new businesses, to these new partners. A lot of them were existing partners. You know, we brought a lot of different coffees like Pilot and Boxcar. Um, so we people we'd worked with in the past, so we had existing relationships there, but we were actually able to sell their products now. So you know, it was kind. It, it, when it says it became really cyclical. Before it was they were buying our product and selling it, and now we were doing doing that for them. So that was a really really great and. We've, I think we've had some really fun partnerships, like we partnered with uh, Baldessare, which is an amazing kind of very, lo very small local, well, they're actually a big pasta maker, but um, we partnered with them and it was great because I was like, you know, I never thought when we started Greenhouse that we would also be selling, you know, my favorite pasta, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it was one of those things where we felt it was very Toronto, we could support the local community in kind of these these harder times and and um, also give our customer you know some some things that they they would want that they might not necessarily be able to get at their grocery store so yeah. you know yeah. shop plant pantry and you probably still have to go to your grocery store but you get a lot of things you might not be able to find that if you had to go you'd have to go to like four different stores or that they aren't selling out of their own stores anymore so it's been a really uh, amazing project uh, We've been able, yeah, as I said, we're we're continuously adding products, and we've had amazing response from our customers. So yeah, it's been a, a really exciting. And will you continue to do that post pandemic? Uh, yes, I I do think we will, but just because of the you know the, because of the response, it's it's really had such an amazing response. So I think we will definitely. That's great. That's great. Um, there's so much information out there, Hannah. I'm wondering where you turn to for the most reliable information is it the city is it the province is it the federal government uh, local health where do you turn to for direction 
I think for us it's been really important to kind of follow all of all of the you know the city's the city what the city says what the province says what the federal government says and then obviously for us because we're interacting with customers Toronto public like the public health what you know is is very important so as I said we have a, a committee of people who are personally of greenhouse team members who are personally inv invested in wanting to staying up to date with everything that comes out through COVID and then um, disseminating that to all the different teams. So it's a lot of information and things are still changing daily and weekly, but it is it has become easier to digest. I think as as we as our community, as the greenhouse community and as the larger community uh, has become a little bit more accustomed to our current situation, the information has become easier to process as well. So before there was a lot of information coming at you every day and there still is, but I think there is, there's a lot of overlap and there's a lot, you know, where we can, we can be more targeted with what we need. You know, earlier on it was, we have to figure out everything to do with all the different wage subsidies. And, and now we're, we're focused on, you know, what, what, what phases are we going through? How, how is that progressing as we're in phase one? What's the response to phase one and, you know, and, and what is the, the health, the public health saying about phase one and how that's going? Uh, what's been your experience, Lynn, with the flood of information coming at you? Um, uh, to be honest, I've been too busy. <laughs> my my accountant has sent me information. Um, I definitely early on, you know, looked up um, what I could do for my team. Um, and um, I haven't applied for anything. Um, it's sort of it's it's sort of a very it's it's so great that you have us both on because we're such different scales you know um i basically run the store by myself and i don't even you know have a manager at the moment so it's been all on me and my team to kind of run the store and figure that out so um i mean um i listen to the news um, I always read up on what, you know, new restrictions, what's lifted from our provincial health board, our city health board. Um, but in terms of like um, government support and stuff like that, I know it's out there I, and I know what is available to us, but it's just having time um, to get into, um, to sit down and, and apply and um, figure out what's best for 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 what we need. Um, but for sure, the first thing we wanted to do was make sure our staff members who weren't working, um, what was available to them. That's pretty incredible, Lynn, that you didn't have to or that you chose not to apply for any of the government subsidies. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure we qualify. <laughs> um, because you know our sales are down from from last year for sure by by about half uh, when I looked at the numbers recently, but um, and I know it's still available, so that's why I'm not panicking. Um, and it's just finding the time to do that um, with so much piling up. Um, but we have been able to stay afloat um, financially just from our online sales. Um, and of course, we, we definitely have savings for rainy days, um, bad months. So we, we do have a pool to um, draw from um, in the interim when we need it. Um, and then definitely, I mean, every day, everybody's telling me, you haven't applied yet. So I'm working on it. <laughs> has, has covering your rent been an issue at all? Doesn't sound like it. No, I mean, it's, um we are very very fortunate that our sales even though it is down is still enough for us to cover rent and wages um pay our suppliers so we've got all the basics covered hannah what about you have you applied have you taken advantage of any of the subsidies yes yeah we've definitely as i said we were going into 2020 with plans to expand across Canada. So I think, you know, for us, it was, it was a definitely a big halt uh, to what we had forecasted for the year. So having to, you know, we've, um, 
think as the, I think the government has done, you know, they've done a good job of reevaluating different kinds of businesses because, you know, we are, you know, our, our growth from last year is very different from our growth for this year versus January. So they've done some, I think they've put in a lot of good, um, they've reevaluated from, you know, from the first, as I said, from like the first thing they released to what they've released today has changed. And that is changed from input from small business owners and because they're just, you know, small, small and medium sized business. I know they're all grouped under one umbrella, but it's just such a range such a range of businesses and I think at least they've taken that into consideration which has been really great for us. It's not as though both of you have treated your employees very well uh, throughout this period. Hannah, how has your role as a business owner and a leader changed? Uh, I think that with, you know, with everything that's been going on, I think the most important thing has been, you know, being really being really engaged with our with our team and you know keeping up to date not that we weren't before but i think that you know as i said it's we, you know everyone has their own worlds that they're focusing on so if they're focusing you know if i'm for focusing on food service and retail you know my partners are focusing on x and y so i think that it's it's kind of it's obviously uh made our worlds a little bit smaller uh with everything that's been going on um but really, it's 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 highlighted the importance of having a really great team, um, of, of you know, of of fostering that team, of building them out, of of you know, all fa factors of it, not just about how people work in their day to day lives of of their you know, their working lives, but it's you know, how can we take care of our team members personally as well, especially during this time. Uh, uh, we've had to, we've all gone virtual. We've closed our head office, and now we all work. Uh, at home and and we have a lot of virtual meetings but i think you know it's it's about keeping making sure that everyone's situation is being like really comfortable engaging people in other ways other than just you know virtual meetings back to back to back it's you know our virtual coffee breaks or our virtual yoga breaks which we we didn't have those before you know we 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 would maybe go for a coffee with with someone in the office but now it's this you know we actually take the 30 minutes and we sit and we chat about non-work related things all with our own coffees at home. Uh, so I think it's taught us a lot about that, about engaging and, and uh, you know, just, just fostering that relationship and how important the team as a whole is, uh, has been, I think, and, and how amazing, how amazing our team has been has really shown us that we've, that we have, a, you know, that we've built a really great team. Lynn, what have you learned about yourself as a leader? Um, yeah, I guess, um, most of the time I don't think about myself as a leader. I'm just head down, um, just running the operations day to day issues, trying to get through that. And, um, um, I've been pretty, um, happy with how quickly, uh, my, uh, myself and my team has adapted. Um, I was kind of picturing, you know, that story about the mom who miraculously is able to lift the car uh -huh. <laughs> from um, where the, the child is pinned under. Um, I feel like that's what it feels like on, on a, you know, um, on my scale anyways, that we've just been able to just lift the store up and change things really quickly. And I feel like that's um, not just for me, but I feel like when the opportunity or the circumstances arrives, we all have that potential. So, yeah, it's, it's been that's it's amazing. Been I hope that you take a moment to really absorb that and give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, thanks. There's no time, but thank you. I will eventually. <laughs> Hannah, um, how do you see when this is, I don't know if I can even say it's going to be over because we don't know when it's going to end or what things are going to look like on the other side, but how do you see consumer habits changing? The way we shop, the way we eat, um, the way we think about healthier lifestyles. I, I see a lot, I see a lot of the, um, 
I see a lot of the habits continuing to stay online. Uh, I think that people who might not have ever gone online uh, to purchase groceries or to get, you know, to get their juice are now seeing the ease of it, uh, the convenience and, and the safety of it. So I think that that will continue even once we are allowed, uh, maybe once the restrictions do loosen, I still see that continuing. Uh, and I think that definitely, I think people will, you know, they think, I think people will think a lot more about what they're putting into their bodies. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, health is something that you can't just do do have overnight you know it's something that you have to think about every single day um i think especially with covid you know it's not it can it can be really lethal for a lot of for, for a lot of people but it it's not for a lot of people so if you know if you're healthy and you live a healthy lifestyle and you can and you have a strong immune system you can fight it off and i think people are realizing that this, you know, like a strong immune system isn't just this phantom thing that you that, that exists it is time and it doesn't, it's not just, you know, you can't just do it overnight. So I think people investing in their health uh, a lot more will probably, I think we'll see, you know, making, making choices towards that, whether it's in, you know, with their everyday shopping, with what they add in, you know, like a cold pressed juice, I think that that will definitely all um, continue as, as, as we go through this this process. And Lynn, given that your um, brand is about the environment, waste, reducing waste, how will you operate after the pandemic or as we get through various stages of the pandemic? How do you balance keeping the environment or thinking about the environment and running a business in a different way? Yeah, um, I, I think we have kind of a battle ahead of us um, with all the banning of of, of uh, reusable mugs mm. and containers and not even being allowed to bring your own shopping bags. It feels like um, what we've achieved in t 10, 20 years has been undone in a couple of months. So um, uh, we will continue to, I mean, if we were not allowed to run our shop with some form of reusable containers, I would have closed my store. It's just it would be against everything we stood for if we just sold things that people would throw, you know, away that would, I mean, we, we use paper bags, but at least that's compostable or recyclable. Um, so yeah, um, we're just gonna closely follow what um, Vancouver Coastal Health allows us to do as soon as we're allowed to re reuse people's containers, we absolutely will. But in, in the meantime, I think these deposit jars are here to stay um, and people seem quite happy with it. Um, I think it is, and I see a lot of your waste stores across Canada doing the same thing. So I think this is going to be a new um, component of a lot of our businesses now. Okay, again, looking ahead, Hannah, at the start of 2020, um, after your wedding, you had a lot of hopes and dreams about what the year ahead was gonna look like, big plans to expand your business. Have you put those plans on hold? Have you modified them? What's your plan going forward? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I think that obviously we had to put some of our plans definitely on hold for, for the time being. As I said, we were looking to expand our grocery and our food service distribution across Canada, open up home delivery in other cities as well. And I think that, you know, that is that is still our plan as, uh, as things reopen and as we figure out how we make, yeah, and how we make this work in, in the new, new COVID times. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that we will continue on that trajectory. We will, we still, you know, we still want to be, we, we, we are a national brand and we want to just continue growing on that front. Uh, and even now we're looking, you know, with the, with the new plant pantry, we're looking to even expand our, our own delivery network uh, into, for, into more areas as well. So I think maybe the, ex the expansion will still, like our our growth will still occur, but it might be in a different way that we envisioned at the beginning of 2020 versus now. And Lynn, what do you think? Um, uh, 
growing, staying when I, where you are. When, when I, when I um, headed, when we entered into 2020, um, my goal was to build an executive management team um, because running a, a shop of company all by yourself on um, the management level is very, very hard to to um, think about growth or expansion. And so um, I'm still, it's kind of delayed me, but um, we are um, putting together, trying to put together a team so that um, we can plan ahead and see um, where we, I have some ideas about where I want the store to go, um, but first I feel like I have to just look at what's in front of me and first thing is to build this team and I'm very excited for it. And I'm, um, I'm also um, looking, you know, w with the team as Hannah has, um, uh, has shown, with the team, you can do so much more and you can get so much more different input and expertise. And uh, that's where I'm going to take my company next. <laughs> I always say when I have these conversations, um, with women of influence, the people that I get to talk to, that there's something special about entrepreneurs. There's something different in your DNA. And both of you have obviously built a business out of a passion um, based on your values. And I'm wondering, do you both feel like you're still living the dream, Lynn? Um, well, uh, sorry, I don't even know um, to live the dream, um, I don't. I don't know if living the dream means working seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for twelve to sixteen-hour days. I don't know if that's my dream, um, but that's my reality right now. But you're not walking I, away. You're not I'm walking not, away. I wouldn't change. Well, I would change some things, <laughs> but really. Um, I can't imagine doing anything else. And I, I just want to briefly say that I worked for lots of small businesses um, from the, you know, the minute that I was able to start working um, for years. And um, I watched a lot of small business owners have very stressful lives. And, uh, it, and I never, I looked at them and I said, that's not for me. <laughs> And it's here not, you are. It's not worth it. And here I am because I found something. I came into entrepreneurship because of a passion. And this is where the passion took me. And so I'm very, very grateful to have found that passion and to have this vehicle to express it. Okay. So I'll rephrase it. Maybe not living the dream. <laughs> living with passion, Hannah. How about that? Uh, definitely. I am. Um... I feel I feel very lucky because I'm not alone in, in my business. I have two amazing partners. Um, so I I do feel very lucky every day that we can still we can still spread greenhouse love. We are, have a platform to offer healthy products in a time where healthy products are in such high demand and we're able to be in business and where we're fortunate enough to continue. Uh, so yes, I feel I feel very fortunate, and I still, you know, very passionate about greenhouse every single day, and how we're, you know, I especially, you know, it was almost, it's like a, reinv a reinvigoration because we had to we had to pivot, you know, it's like day one all over again. What it's a new business after once kind of COVID hit, it's things changed so drastically. So uh, there are lots of changes, but I think all changes that have, you know, that have, as I said, made us stronger as a team and fortified our business and, you know, given us the strength to continue growing. Right on. Okay, let's open things up to some questions from our audience. Um, how about this one? What's been the most effective way or ways uh, that you have communicated with customers? Has it been social media, your website? What has it been? Lynn, I'll start with you. Um both yeah so but social media is just so much more direct um for for us um i announce you know we're delivering in this area in a few days um the, here's the deadline and people start submitting their orders 
<laughs> so um, it, it's uh, I'm I'm it's such a gift to entrepreneurs or small businesses to have social media. Okay, terrific, Hannah. What about you? Uh, social yeah, media. social media has been a big one. Um, a couple a couple of newsletters as well, but mostly social media. Okay. Um, as business owners, has your perception of success changed? Anna, to you first. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that even before COVID, I think that it does change daily because there's like small. There's obviously like there's small successes that sometimes we don't even that we pass over, and then you know months later, I'm like, oh, we should have I should have celebrated that. So I think it's it's appreciating those little wins a little bit more that success can, can come in in forms a success for us right now is you know every day having a new a new safety measure in one of our stores that's a that's a success so i think that it is kind of just measuring the levels of success and ta and and taking a little bit more time to celebrate those little wins even if it is 30 seconds to you know give yourself a pat on the back and say we did this that was you know that we accomplished something yeah, Lynn, what about you? How do you define success? Yeah, um, I think success is community. Um, um, it's it's the, the, you know, the three, um, the triple bottom line, you know, it's planet, people, planet, and then profit. And I, and I really base my definition of success on all of that. And that hasn't changed, it's just shifted. Um, even um, during this time when we are um, in um, more of a, we're in a less of a financial uh, strong point, um, we have donated lots of things to um, the um, downtown east side, which is a community in Vancouver that um, has high rates of poverty and homelessness. So we donated um, products to those people. And that's to me is, um, we're successful enough that we can share what we have with others. Terrific, okay. Here's another question. I run a small business and I have been overwhelmed by things. What strategy have you put in place to help manage um, the workload and staff, Lynn? Yeah, it's uh, it's so challenging. I agree with you. Um, I just take one task at a time. You know, one day we were like, our staff didn't feel safe. What can we do? And I would recommend engaging your staff and having them um, have uh, input or be part of that discussion and, and planning stage. Um, it just makes them feel a part of um, the, the changes and the development. And also, uh, they literally do have an input which will make them feel better um, for their safety, for example. Um, uh, I'm um, eternally grateful to my staff because um, many heads together, um, we just come up with better ideas and we build on each other's ideas. So, yeah. How do you manage it? Do you have a strategy you can share? I think it's, uh, I do think it is, it's uh, having those those check-ins, have it being able to connect with your team uh, and just, you know, having priorities, I think that, and it's really easy to get bogged down with things that might seem urgent, but that might not actually be able to bring your business forward. So really see, like, I think it's the, the urgent versus the essential is how I've tried to, to prioritize. Is a much bigger project, but to, you have to get through those things. And then there's things that seem urgent that might not actually bring the business forward or, or benefit your team. So I think it is, it's trying to, sometimes it's trying to take a step back and slowing it down as opposed to trying just to rush forward with everything, taking a minute and reevaluating what those priorities are, engaging your staff and bringing them in as well, because again, it, it does help to have more heads together and it makes that it will engage your team as well and probably will get things done uh, more efficiently. If there's one thing that you could do differently, if you could turn back time, what would you do, Hannah? That's and let's say time question. goes back to the middle of March. I won't take it any further than that. Um, 
I I guess I would have probably tried to slow down a little bit as well. Like, you know, take it, as I said, things were moving really quickly. And I know that like it's hard to get, it's easy to get caught up in that panic. So the way that your mind works and, you know, trying basically trying to take my own advice of, of stepping back and, you know, maybe not, there was definitely were moments of panic and, and just taking a breath and, you know, letting and reminding myself that things will be okay. We will, we will get through this. Uh, how we get through it is, I think, the most important part. So that's taking time and, and making sure that we're making the best decisions for the team, for the company, for our customers, for, you know, taking into account everything and, and uh, just moving forward that way. Lynn, what would you do? Um, you know, I'm just thinking back and I, I don't, I, I don't know that I would have changed anything because it just has been one thing building on the next, uh, on the previous thing. So where we are today took a lot of trial and error to get to where we are. So um, if we had missed a step somewhere, I don't know where we would have ended up. Um, um, so um, yeah, I think um, if, if I could, if I could change anything, I, I probably would have tried harder to retain my staff. Like I, I wish mm -hmm. I had thought about um, creating evening shifts where no one was around so that I could still keep more of my team. I guess that's the thing that I wish I knew back then. <laughs> okay, we're almost to the hour. Um, this is my question. Three words. If I worked for each of you, what three words do you think I would use to describe your leadership or management style? Hannah. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you get more time to think about it though, Lynn. <laughs> I think... Um, be real, be real. It's a good exercise in kind of looking inward. I think empathetic. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, I really, I do try in in my personal and professional life, you know, to always put myself in someone else's shoes and really see how they're feeling, especially during this time where okay. where everything is, you know, kind of topsy turvy. Um, One. I say I hard like I'm. I appre I don't know if this, it's not one word, but I do appreciate hard work. So however that translates, I I'm. I think I'm a fair leader, but I also, I, you know, I appreciate hard work and I think that, you know, if I, I put in a lot of work and I uh, expect that from the team as well. Um, and I guess I would say that I'm, I am a fair, a fair leader, I, I guess. It's something that I've tried really hard in my life to make sure that that there's a balance between work and professional and personal. And I think that that's even more important now when your professional and your personal have blended so much. So right. I think okay. it's, I, it's always been a priority of mine as being a business owner that, you know, that to have that balance. And I think that I do encourage my team to do that as well. Stuff. Okay. Lynn, three words. Human. <laughs> <laughs> <Work and all. laughs> exactly. Um, uh, I would say, uh, I don't know the word for this, but leading by example. So when you, when Hannah was saying hardworking, like that, that's sort of like, I'm, uh, I'm, tr I'm doing everything my staff are doing and I hope that they are modeling after me. Um, so I'm, I guess, involved, <laughs> um, okay. and, um, and uh, I think evolving. Um, I'm still trying to figure out who I am as a leader. Um, and I, I started out thinking that I was a shopkeeper. <laughs> and then suddenly I have a team. And so I'm, I'm learning how to be a leader. So I'm evolving. Terrific. Great stuff. I thank you both. And I wish you all the success in the days and months ahead. Lynn Trong, Hannah James, it has been such a pleasure. I almost feel bad saying goodbye to you, Lynn, because I get the sense that you work so much. This has probably been the most relaxing hour that you've had <laughs> in the last three months. <laughs> well, I've really enjoyed it and they were such great questions.
Oh, good. Hannah, uh, and all the best to you as well. You know I'm such a huge fan of Greenhouse. Um, so that brings us to our hour. I want to thank everyone for joining us and to the panelists for being so candid. I also want to thank the presenting sponsors, BDC, the only bank that is devoted exclusively to entrepreneurs in Cisco Designed, helping small business and female entrepreneurs survive and recover through secure remote work technology. We encourage you to access their resources posted in the chat box. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with us today. I invite you to join us for the final installment of this five-part series, Wednesday, June 10th, with Mandy and Rebecca Wolf from Mandy's Salads. Until then, everyone, be safe, take care, enjoy the warm weather wherever you are across this country, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you.